Hello everyone and welcome to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to forecast your sales amount and seamlessly integrate along with your actual sales amount and display this on your column chart, providing a very clear comparison that's easy to interpret. If you notice this column chart here, the orange columns here are representing the actual sales that have happened in that particular year. And the gray bar that you see here is the forecast sales. And this is an overlapping bar that I have created here, which makes things very simple and easy to understand. Now in this video, I'm using the simple moving average method to forecast the sales, but you are free to use different models that are available like ARIMA or your linear regression, your gradient boost, etc. I wanted to keep things simple here, so I'm choosing the simple moving average method. The simple moving average method is a basic time series forecasting technique, ideal for data with no clear trend or seasonality. So let's dive in and enhance your data storytelling with this effective visualization technique. Let me show you the data model that I have here. I have the orders table, which is my fact table, and that is connected to my calendar table. If you don't know how to create a calendar table, I will leave a link to the video in the description below. Please do check it out. Now let me add a new page here and start creating the visual. I'm going to create a clustered column chart here and let's add in the data here. I'm going to add the date from my calendar table and on the Y axis here, I'm going to add the sales amount from my orders table. And now let's start by creating in a measure. Let's call this as forecast underscore sales. I would like to break down this measure in a very detailed manner. So please bear with me. First of all, we would like to only forecast the sales for the year 2024 or the latest year, right? So let's start by defining in a variable where we will identify the max year that I have in my data set. So let's start by defining the max year as a variable and say is equals to, I'm going to use the max function here and pass in my year field that I have in my calendar table. I'm identifying the max year or the latest year that I have in my data set. Now let me call the return statement and then pass in the max year variable that we have created here and click on confirm. And let me bring in the forecast sales here into a new card and you can see that it is now displaying the latest year that I have in my data set, which is 2024. And let's go ahead and start adding in some more variables to this measure now. And now, I'm going to add another variable. I'm going to call this variable here. I would like to identify what is my sales for the year 2024. So let's identify the sales. I'm going to say sales underscore is equals to, and then use the calculate function, sum of my sales amount from my orders table followed by a comma. And then I'm going to say year, which is calendar year is equals to the max here that we have identified here using the variable. I'm going to close the bracket here. And then now let's test this out. I'm going to say sales here instead of max here and then click on confirm. And you can see that it's now displaying 852. Okay, let's confirm that. I'm going to add the data labels in here. And you can see that we're now returning the exact value of sales that we have in the year 2024. Now let's define another variable and to calculate the average of my sales, I would like to know how many months of data do I have in my data set. So let's define number of months as a variable and say is equals to, I'm going to use the calculate function and within the calculate function, I'm going to use the distinct count and I'm going to count the number of months that I have in my calendar table followed by a comma. And then I'm going to filter the year that I have in my calendar table is equal to the max year that we have identified through our variable, which means that this is going to return 2024 and it is filtering here. The calendar table gets filtered for the year 2024. And then we are calculating the months that are available in the year 2024. And then let's close the bracket here and then let's return number of month and then click on confirm. And you will see that it is returning as five. And when I drill down here, let me drill down and show this. So the number of months that I have, and you can see that I have the data here from January onwards up until May. And now it's time to define another variable. And this time we will calculate the average sales. I'm going to define a variable here called average sales is equals to, I now have my sales amount, which I have defined here in my variable. And then I'm going to divide that by the number of month by number of month. So this will return the average sales amount. Let's do that and check 
that as well. I'm going to click on close now and you can see that our average sales amount is 170K. Now let's go back to our measure. If I multiply this with 12 months, I will now get the forecast value for the entire year, which is about 2 million. Now we've got our value here. Now let's add this measure into our visual. So let me bring in the forecast sales here into our Y axis. Now I see a problem. Now, instead of just displaying the value here for the year 2024, it is calculating the sales or the forecast sales here for the rest of the years as well. And if you actually go back into our forecast sales measure and you see that we have used the max calendar year and we also have a filter context here, which is applied. So basically it is calculating the max year for every single year that I have on my X axis. So we will have to change this so that the forecast sales is calculated only for the year 2024. So we will make some changes here. I'm going to use the calculate function here to identify the max year followed by a comma. And then I'm going to say all, which means that it is going to remove the filter context that I have on my X axis and then say the calendar table. I'm going to close the bracket here twice and confirm. And now basically what this function here is doing is it is removing all the filters that I have applied on my calendar table on the X axis here, the filter context. And then it is calculating the max here and passing the same max here here in rest of our filters. Now let's close this. And now you can see that we are displaying the forecast value only for the year 2024. Let's make some changes to this. Let's go into the format tab and under the format tab under columns let's scroll down and then you can choose the series here called forecast sales and then you can change the color of the bar of your choice I'm gonna choose this white 30% darker here and then also increase the transparency let's say to about 50% or so and let me drop this to about 30 and I can also add in a border if I would like to I can add this border here and increase the transparency let's say to about 50% so that it is looking nice and now let me go back to up the series here and choose all and let's scroll down. I now have the layout enabled. I can now toggle overlap on here and then increase the space between categories to about 30% and then select or toggle flip overlap here so that our overlap values are behind. And then you can play around with the space between series here so that it matches your requirement. You can play around with the space between categories as well so that it looks nice and clean. And now we've created a column chart here which is displaying the forecast sales as an overlap bar for the year 2024 which makes it easy and clear to interpret the data between the actuals and the forecast. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.